The Dubious Tool by Jenny Arach Nestled amongst trees at East Dean Road Youth Hostel, my journey starts from the elevated aspect of top deck. South Downs seem silent and dark, snuggled under night's blanket, still in early morning slumber, stirred by low bus engine murmur. In the twin seat up front, now the pandemic is the reason I sit alone, rather than my colour. Free to unwrap thoughts. Most on this regular coastal route are on their way to the daily grind, as I used to be, factory fodder. The sharp pinch in our pockets has created the National Food Bank culture, a subtle Dunkirk spirit in our local community, defeat rewritten as White Cliff victory, defence of home and family, bulwark against political tyranny and economic inequality. This coastal commute from Beachy Head is another food bank, to feast on morning and noon, sustaining the mind, body and soul. The bus crests Golf Course Hill. I pull the tab, open nature's donated tin, feed on the scene. Take a deep breath in, a long breath out. Let my body sag comfortably into the seat. Imbibe seascape through condensation-drenched glass. Sapphire, emerald and ivory cliff tonic. Every day, first sight across the Downs Valley, watching dawn peep blue as the sun begins its rise beyond Bell Toot. In the transcendental moment from night to day, an opaque light casts a veil over panorama. I see a land that once was here, unfamiliar wooded, marshy ground with gentle hills seamlessly joined onto seven sisters. People walking, carrying handmade tools, bare feet cutting paths through chalkland grass. Their journey began 3.8 million years before, in East Africa, humankind's birthplace, cradle of my father. 7,000 miles away, their footprints, preserved in clay at La Etoli, are exact replicas of our own. The sun blinks and the veil drops, leaving only beachy head abutting the undulating lapis lazuli carpet and echoes of ancient footfalls in the call of stone chats hidden in cliff-top gorse. Two parallel seaside postcards of my life. String of pearls beachy head edge between aquamarine sea and blue sky wedge. From my childhood bedroom window, cliffs of burnt charcoal, gold sand, greeting palms and electric oyster bay. Downhill through Friston, I gaze on two rivers, one meandering, with Oxbow Lake standing, my Bwagamoyo, where my spent journeys rest in soft sediment. Unbearable losses and completed chapters, events gathered from two continents. A nearby flapping consternation adds to my quiet contemplation. Skylark's exhilarating melody Dr. Nico's electric guitar, Kiri Kiri. Joy filled our home in Entebbe. Then, cliff drop shock. Heart stopped. Terror of bloody coup. Fear. Forced migration. Family dislocation. Hundreds of seagulls flutter in the wake of tractor pulling plough, turning brown soil releasing a flotilla of white pages into the air. Beloved childhood Dar es Salaam, warm soft sand turned stony shore, sharp dig in child's brown skin. Spotless white egret stock still by the bridge at Exit. The same bird's hologram at Selinder Bridge 
Dar es Salaam. Spider's silk brushes my face in feathered caress. Loving touch of hands that have vanished. Joy of babies, now grown, fledged and flown. Nakupenda malaika. You are my sunshine. Hushed lullabies, holding their breath beneath water's surface, awaiting new births. Meanwhile, the straight twin river surges forth with arterial life, coursing into Cookmere Bay. Vigour of heartbeats, powering life ahead for me and the children who come after. The bus twists and turns through Seaford streets, contrasting homes of the well-off and the run-down. Ugh, council. Oh, this is the dubious tour. For the scenic route, you should have got the 13x. Casual slur against the working poor and unwaged, whose income is never enough to prettify their mean rented houses. Green high and over downland bucket, soothes with spill of blue cookmere water. My heart lifts at the sight of blue overalls, flat cap working man, image of my grandfather from Sunderland one of many forgotten builders, labourers and low-paid workers. Women with prams, my mother, my grandmother, cooks, carers and cleaners. No blue plaques, no fanfare commemorate them here. The bus stops at War Cemetery gates, where lie sleeping sons of the old colonies, including Caribbean, forever cradled by mourning down stepmother. They're now independent, far-away birth nations send smart uniform delegations to stand with local schoolchildren to honour them every remembrance. Children playing on the downland, image of my child mother giggling like tottle grass and my child father playing hide-and-seek in tall elephant grass on wide Nile plains, light years away from ever meeting each other yet their crossroads were already well-trodden by past generation. Those journeys precipitated by events, some immediately seismic and catastrophic, others so gradual and subtle over millennia as to be unnoticed, like melting glaciers and separation of land masses. Catalysts in the global movement of people. Labels of immigrant and emigrant, irrelevant, Arrivals and departures, mere points on a compass reference. Our instinctive impetus to travel continues to pulse. No barrier, border or barbed wire will ever quell this primeval force. Doggedly pulling towards this white ragged ribbon by sea, or by air, stoic goodbye glances at familiar green, white and blue scarf laid out below. White and yellow New Haven Dieppe cross channel ferry, furrowing through blue lemonade Seaford Bay, prompts the earliest recollection of my first odyssey from these coastal cliffs to the land marked by the East African Rift. Farewell night, top to toe with my brother, under warm woollen blankets in the home of my White Hawk grandmother, followed by three week voyage on the SS Uganda to ancient port city of Mombasa, then lying cool on a white calico mattress stuffed with hand-picked cotton in the home of my Luo grandmother. Towering seven sisters, ancient layers of chalk strata, grandmother's giant airing cupboards stacked with dream-infused blankets and futures-filled calico mattresses ready to tuck in children and grandchildren, safe in the hearth of the family. Shushed by sounds of rhythmic domestic activity, washing, rinsing, sweeping pebbles to and fro, white noise from Mother Nature's womb. Thanks for listening. To hear more of our stories in this We Hear You Now series, and to download a map and guide, 
visit the Seven Sisters Country Park website.